Hello everyone and welcome to another random video on the internet. Really quickly before we get into the actual what if, I want to thank you all for 2000 subscribers once again. It has been a good journey up until now, I'm hoping it continues being a good journey. And uh, yeah, consider this one hour what if uh, sort of a celebration of that. It's the first on the channel, well, aside from one that happened like a year ago and then I took it down because it was bad, whatever. Uh, anyways, this I'm very proud of how it came out, especially the ending sequence. The ending sequence might be my favorite thing I've ever done in any video period. So I hope you enjoy watching it. And I'm really excited to see what you guys think of it. But anyways, without any further ado, let's hop right into it. Atomic Samurai and Phoenix Man stare each other down, both in a fighting stance, ready to pounce on their enemy at any moment. The bird monster's eyes flinch when four figures step out of the shadows behind the samurai. The Council of Swordsmen. Of course they would accompany their friend to the battlefield. Come on, Kamikaze. Don't go hogging all the fun for yourself now. Let us join in too. No. You four go help the old masters with their opponents. I believe in their abilities, but they're currently in a four-on-two situation. I feel that those three humanoid monsters are pretty strong, and the big guy too. Atomic explains, all while not shifting his gaze away from Phoenix Man for even a moment. The four swordsmen think the situation through for a moment before Nietzsche nods. Okay, just don't get yourself killed here. The old master says as he starts walking toward the other side of the battlefield. The other three council members follow suit. However, Phoenix Man notices something from the corner of his eye. Just for a brief second, he tilts his pupils toward the group of swordsmen and away from Atomic Samurai. In that instance, Atomic readies himself to rush at Phoenix Man and slash his neck. But before he can start moving, he notices the monster's lips contort into a smirk. Getting a bad feeling, the swordsman stops himself from attacking. What's gotten into you? Why are you smiling like that? He asks cautiously and Phoenix Man turns his gaze back at him. Oh, it's nothing really. I just discovered something very funny. No need to concern yourself with it. Atomic Samurai raises an eyebrow. Seriously? Are you trying to crack jokes here? Please, enlighten me on this discovery of yours before I slash your neck open. Well, if you insist. I just find it funny that you're traveling with a monster of all things. This leaves Atomic Samurai confused. What in the world is this thing talking about? Involuntarily, he looks over at the Council of Swordsmen walking away from him. Suddenly, his heart goes cold. Guys, duck! Nichiren, despite being caught completely by surprise, trusts his former pupil completely and ducks down to the ground right away. The other two swordsmen are just a fraction of a second too slow. Their bodies suddenly freeze, and in the next instant, their heads roll off of their bodies. Tch, why do you have to ruin the surprise? Haragiri shouts to Phoenix Man as he draws back his blade, with which he just decapitated two of his comrades. His skin begins morphing. His hair rises into the air, ears become elongated, and his skin becomes rough turning a disgusting shade of brown. A third eye appears on the swordsman's forehead. Sorry, I just couldn't resist the temptation. Phoenix Man shrugs and Haragiri glares at him for a moment before turning to face Nichirin, who's already gotten back to his feet and unsheathed his sword. Well, whatever, it doesn't matter anyways. I'll clean up this scrub while you take care of the annoying samurai. Deal? Deal. Atomic Samurai and Nichiren watch on in shock and disbelief. Two of their longtime comrades are dead, 
and by the hand of a third longtime comrade, no less. Haragiri, what is the meaning of this? Atomic shouts before Phoenix Man suddenly lunges at him at full speed, hoping to take advantage of the hero's shock. Can you really afford to worry about others right now? The monster shouts as he swipes a claw at Atomic, forcing him to block the attack and focus on the target in front of him. Phoenix Man lets out a gleeful grin as he sees the bloodshot look in Atomic Samurai's eyes. I don't know what's going on, but I'll make all of you monsters pay for this with your lives! Watch yourself, Atomic Samurai. This rage is unbefitting of a hero. At the same time, Nichiren clashes blades with his longtime friend. What the hell happened to you? Isn't it obvious? I've reached new heights by abandoning my humanity. On the other side of the battlefield, Goketsu takes his battle stance against Bang and Bomb. Let us see whose methods are more effective. Your training, or my monsterization. Bang responds by taking off his shirt and entering a fighting stance of his own. Come! On command, Goketsu launches at Bang, not holding anything back from the very start. The old man stands his ground as the giant swings a massive fist at him. Moving calmly, like a stream of water, Silver Fang raises one of his arms and gently redirects the blow away from his body. The monster sponge lands on the ground, shaking the entire forest clearing and cracking the earth beneath them. Swiftly, Goketsu draws back his fist and at the same time launches another punch at Bang, followed up by another one, and then another one, and another one. The giant monster unleashes a barrage of devastating attacks on the old master, who perfectly redirects every single one away from himself. After just a couple seconds of this, the terrain around the two warriors is decimated and a giant crater is formed from all the punches. A dust cloud rises into the air. At the same time, Bang's older brother, Bomb, jumps into the air to attack Goketsu while he's assaulting his foe. But just as the old master readies a fist to punch the giant monster, two figures suddenly appear on either side of him. Bomb barely has enough time to react as two swords are swung right at him. Thinking fast, he expertly swirls his body in midair to dodge the blades and gets a look at his attackers. Two monsterized ninjas, Hellfire and Gale, have come to aid their ally. Let those two battle it out uninterrupted. We'll play with you in the meantime. Gale utters before swinging a wide kick at the martial artist, who raises an arm to block it. Not a moment later, Hellfire swings a sword at Bomb from behind. Noticing this, the old master grabs a hold of Gale's leg and swings him at Hellfire. The ninjas collide with one another and are sent flying back a few meters. Bomb prepares this opening to strike Goketsu, but a third ninja, Sonic, rushes at him from below, forcing Bomb to throw the idea of helping his brother out the window. The martial artist exchanges a few punches with Sonic in midair before the two of them land on the ground and the two other ninjas dash back into the battle. The old martial artist jumps back to avoid being surrounded, but his foes give him no time to breathe at all, as they rush at him immediately. Seeing no other way out of this, Bomb takes a fighting stance. Very well. I shall slay you here and now. Meanwhile, Goketsu pulls back both of his fists and takes a step back from Bang. Seeing that regular blows won't work on the old man, the giant decides to change up his strategy. He jumps into the air and shoots out one of his legs at the old martial artist. Bang jumps into the air to avoid being hit, but the kick crashes into the ground, shaking the entire forest. Huge chunks of debris, rocks and whole trees are launched into the sky. Cracks appear all around the battlefield and many combatants lose their footing. Atomic Samurai, Phoenix Man, the Ninjas, the Swordsman, Bomb. Everyone is forced to leap off of the ground and continue their battles in the air, using the chunks of earth and the sky as temporary footholds. Meanwhile, Goketsu lands back on the ground and looks around. 
All the dust and debris makes it hard to see where Bang went. There's no way he was crushed in that last attack. He has to be lurking somewhere. Goketsu's eyes start darting around, examining every chunk of rubble in the air around him. Without warning, Silver Fang lunges at the giant's back from behind one of the pieces of rock, aiming to slam a fist into the back of a Goketsu's neck. Unfortunately for the old martial artist, Bang's enhanced sense of hearing picks up on his movements and he turns to face his foe just fast enough to block his attack and launch a counter-strike. A swift chop to Bang's side. Taken by surprise, the old master is hit and sent crashing into the ground. Not wasting a second, as soon as Goketsu sees where Bang landed, he launches a leg at the spot, trying to crush Bang with a devastating kick. Silver Fang recovers just fast enough to notice the incoming attack and get back to his feet before redirecting the kick to the side and making Goketsu lose his balance by doing so. Bang then sprints at the monster and before it can react, he drives a strong punch into the giant's nose. This combined with the previous act of disrupting Goketsu's balance makes the monster topple over. His back hits the ground, and Bang takes advantage of this by rocketing at the creature from above with the intent to drive a kick into one of his eyes. Thinking fast, Goketsu swings both of his hands at the incoming human missile and claps them together, smushing his opponent in between his palms. Bang grunts in pain as the power of the clap makes his bones ache. Damn it, he made an oversight. He thought making the monster fall to the ground would stun him for a bit, but it seems Goketsu was truly experienced and did not let such a minor setback disrupt his focus on the enemy. The giant's arm muscles bulge as he attempts to crush Bang in between his palms. In return, the old man tenses up every muscle in his body to withstand the pressure being placed on him. Realizing he won't get anywhere like this, Goketsu suddenly separates his arms, freeing Bang. But a mere fraction of a second later, he sends a powerful kick at the martial artist's back. Bang, still stiff from the previous struggle, can't react in time and the monster's knee crashes into his back, making the old man cough up some spit and sending him flying. Quickly, Goketsu flips onto his stomach and hops back to his feet before sprinting after his opponent. Meanwhile, Bang regains his bearings and lands on his feet. He slides a few meters before coming to a halt. The moment he stops his momentum, he sees Goketsu already above him, ready to drive a fist down onto the old man. However, this time Silver Fang is prepared for the attack. He quickly redirects it into the ground before hopping onto the monster's extended arm and running up to his face on it. Once Bang reaches the monster's shoulder, he intends to jump off of it and aim a punch at the giant's neck, right at one of the arteries. Goketsu's eyes widen. Right as Bang gets onto his shoulder, he quickly lifts it and presses it to his neck, hoping to squish his opponent in between his massive shoulder and neck. Not falling for tricks like that again! Bang shouts as he grabs a hold of one of Goketsu's shoulder spikes and throws himself off of the monster's shoulder before he could get caught. Maybe not, but you've left yourself wide open. Goketsu shouts triumphantly as Bang is now in mid-air and vulnerable. The giant launches a powerful punch at Silver Fang, but to his surprise, the master easily redirects the blow, even from this position. Do not be so sure, creature. As the two martial artists continue their battle, elsewhere, Bomb is getting attacked from all angles as the three ninjas chase him around the battlefield. Without a sword, the martial artist does not have any way to block his opponent's blades, so he's forced to keep dodging their every move, jumping from rock to rock, using the debris still in the air as footholds and as cover. Eventually, this starts to annoy the ninjas. Maybe we should split up? One of us can hold off this geezer while the rest go assist Goketsu or kill the other heroes. No. This man might be a coward, but his movements are fluid and radiate skill and experience. If we split up, he'll pick us off one by one. Tricky old bastard. Hellfire informs Sonic before Bomb suddenly lunges at him from behind a nearby piece of rubble. Hellfire curses. He let himself be distracted. The old martial artist winds up one of his arms and shoots it at Hellfire, who blocks it with the blunt side of his sword. 
Unexpectedly, the blade suddenly snaps into pieces and several gashes appear on Hellfire's arm. The monster screams out in pain. Bomb smirks slightly. Since when is fighting smart against three opponents considered cowardly? The martial artist asks before kicking Hellfire away. In that instant, Sonic and Gale jump at him from both sides. But with there being two attackers now instead of three, Bomb has a much easier time countering their attacks. He swiftly catches and breaks Sonic's blade before turning to Gale and driving an elbow into his nose, breaking it as well. While both ninjas are still surprised, Bomb takes the opportunity to snatch both of Gale's blades from his hands and throw them as far away as he can manage. Before long, the ninjas regain their composure, and both attack Bomb with punches and kicks, which the old master is able to block and parry with much less difficulty than the blades previously, since he doesn't need to have to worry about getting cut now. The three warriors clash in mid-air as they fall to the ground. As soon as their feet touch the forest floor, the combatants all jump away from each other, and the two ninjas regroup with Hellfire. Gale rubs some blood off of his broken nose, as Hellfire attempts to do the same for his arm, but he soon finds that his arm is completely sliced apart. It will be useless in the battle from now on. Just what kind of weird martial art does this old fart use to be able to mangle his arm like that? Are you guys good to continue? Yes, what about you? My arm is busted up, but I'll be fine. More importantly, this bastard is smarter than he looks. He waited for the perfect chance to get rid of our weapons. We've lost a crucial advantage. Never mind that. We can fight with our bare hands. Right. Let's hit him with all we've got. Seeing that his foes are ready for round two, Bomb takes his fighting stance. He huffs a bit. His old age is starting to catch up to him. Stamina-wise, Bomb is not going to hold up very well. He needs to finish this quickly. Now that the ninjas have lost their blades, that shouldn't be too difficult. Meanwhile, Atomic Samurai clashes with Phoenix Man. The two warriors match each other blow for blow, blocking and parrying each other's attacks as the debris launched into the air at the beginning of the battle is finally falling back down to the ground and landing all around them. The two of them have to be careful to not let any huge rubble crash into their heads. By now, Phoenix Man's wing has completely regenerated, and he uses his claws, as well as the sharp tips of his wings, to swipe at Atomic Samurai, and put as much pressure on him as possible. With two arms and four wings, that's six appendages in total for Atomic to watch out for. The Swordsmaster elegantly maneuvers himself around all of them, dodging and parrying attacks with unreal levels of mastery in the art of swordsmanship. Witnessing this skill firsthand, Phoenix Man can't help but feel some respect for the samurai. But at the same time, he also feels annoyed. Nothing he does is getting through to Atomic. The monster has to think of something new and different. That's when he suddenly spreads out his wings and flies into the air. Ever faced a flying foe before, Atomic Samurai? Phoenix Man laughs before lunging at the hero from the sky at an enormous speed. Atomic is taken aback, but not caught off guard. He raises his sword to block the incoming attack, but right as the bird monster's claw is about to collide with the samurai's blade, Phoenix Man swirls to the side and flies past the swordsman, brushing one of his razor-sharp winds against the swordsman's side. Kamikaze grunts as a gash appears just under his ribs. Not good. Phoenix Man flies a few dozen meters before turning around and lunging at the hero again. Ignoring the blood gushing out from his wound, Atomic Samurai raises his blade. He keeps a close eye on the opponent, watching to see what direction he'll go in this time. Wrinkles appear around Kamikaze's eyes as he strains his senses to their limits. He cannot allow himself to be hit like that again. At the last moment before impact, Phoenix Man swirls to the side again, but this time Atomic Samurai is able to react in time and block the monster's attack. This pattern repeats multiple times, with Phoenix Man backing off and charging in. Backing off and charging in. He's inflicted a serious wound already. Now all he has to do is wear his opponent down and let him bleed out. 
shouldn't be very difficult. He just has to keep Atomic occupied enough to not allow him to treat his injury. Meanwhile, Atomic Samurai is in a bad spot. He can't really even go for any kill shots, since unless the monster is completely destroyed, he can just come back stronger than before. The Atomic Slash is his only real chance at victory, and even then, it's only a chance. He could cut the monster up into a thousand tiny pieces, but who knows what the limit of Phoenix Man's rebirth ability is. He might need to be completely annihilated in order to actually die. What if the Atomic Slash isn't enough? The damned monster might come back even stronger than he is now, and at that point, nobody here would even stand a chance. What a pain. As the action is going on all around the battlefield, below ground, Garo's limb body has fallen into one of the large cracks in the earth. Beaten and broken, bleeding, with several of his shattered bones piercing his internal organs, having fallen from quite the distance on top of that. The hero hunter's body is giving out on him. His vision is starting to fade. Garo curses under his breath. If something doesn't change fast, he's going to die. There's nothing he can do. Nothing he can change. He can't accomplish his goals anymore. Not like this. He really is about to bleed to death in some miserable hellhole. Not to mention that he had to be saved by the old man just to get this far. How pathetic. How infuriating. No, it cannot end like this. It cannot end like this. Garo screams out. Through sheer willpower, he starts moving. As he thinks about his goals and how to achieve them, as he thinks about what kind of evil he truly wants to commit, Garo's body starts changing. His bones snap back into place. His wounds close up. Monsterization is beginning to take full effect, and Garo's limiter is starting to break. Unaware of this, Bang continues his battle with Goketsu. The two martial artists dash around the battlefield at faster than light speeds, exchanging hundreds of blows, parrying, blocking, and redirecting each other's every attack flawlessly. In the chaos, seconds seem to turn into hours as the two warriors start perceiving time differently. So much is happening in such a short amount of time. Punches, kicks, and parries start blending together into one blurry hurricane. From the side, only after images of the battle can be seen. Bang grunts as he barely dodges a kick from an unexpected angle. Goketsu groans when one of Bang's punches manages to land on his side. The martial artists are really pushing each other to the limit. Bang realizes that if things go on like this, he'll be the one to tire out first. He'd like to avoid using the awakening breath, as it would drain his very life essence. And Silver Fang wants to save what little time he has left as a fighter to reach out to his lost student, Garo. The old master really does not want to risk spending the last of his strength dealing with this monster. But if he doesn't, and things drag out too much, he'll have to resort to the awakening breath anyway. There's no point in waiting until then. If Bang uses his trump card now and finishes the battle quickly, he might still have enough gas in the tank left for Garo later. And so the master makes up his mind. He jumps into the air high above Goketsu, and takes a deep breath. Out of nowhere, a figure lunges at Bang from a blind spot and slams a fist into his ribs. Silver Fang's eyes widen in shock from the sudden pain. Where'd this come from? He looks down and sees Garo, but he looks different somehow. Don't count me out of the battle yet, old man. The hero hunter smirks before driving his fist deeper into his master's side. Bang feels a couple of his ribs snap and ram into one of his lungs. Coughing up blood, the martial artist composes himself and kicks his pupil away. Both master and student land on the ground. 
Bang clenches his side while Garo stands up tall, looking different, more monstrous. His hair is blood red and spiked up. His eyes are both crimson. And perhaps the most noticeable change is a black spiral running all across his body. Garo looks at himself in disbelief. Somehow all of his broken bones have healed. Unbeknownst to him, this is due to his accelerated monsterization. Goketsu looks at the human monster from the side. How are you able to stand? I broke at least a few dozen bones in your legs. Have you monsterized further? Maybe. Who knows? Garo smirks as he turns to face the giant. But that doesn't really matter now. I'm here for a rematch. While Garo gloats, Bang is still in disbelief. What in the world is going on with his pupil? Is he really becoming a monster? How? On top of that, the old master's broken ribs are pressed against his lung. If he tries to take a deep breath now, they'll pierce that lung. Which means he can only take quick and shallow breaths. It also means no more awakening breath. He'll have to fight carefully too. Damn it, this is bad. A rematch, you say? You seem confident for someone who just lost. Besides, I still have to finish off Silverfang. I can play with you later. Oh please, that was only a warm-up. And ain't nobody killing the old man but me. Garo smirks and Goketsu grows irritated. Very well. I shall kill you and then him. The giant crouches down and jumps at Garo, who does the same. The two monsters collide their fists in the air, and to Goketsu's surprise, Garo is able to withstand the impact, which, just minutes ago, would have shattered his entire upper half. The kid's growth is insane. The two monsters fly by each other and land back down on the ground before both bouncing at one another with the intent to kill once again. Goketsu swings his massive fist down on Garo, but the human monster dodges and counterattacks by jumping at the giant's face and attempting to kick him in the nose, only for Goketsu to block the attack with his other arm. The two of them fight like this for a while, Garo zipping around and taking advantage of his opponent's size, while Goketsu uses his size for his own benefit as he smashes both his arms into the ground and creates a massive cloud of dust. With four perceptive eyes, he's able to pick up on the slightest of movements and somewhat see through the smoke, while Garo is left blinded. Just barely, Goketsu notices Garo in the fog and lunges at him with a wound up fist. Before the hero hunter can realize what's going on, the giant's punch crashes into his body and sends him flying out of the smoke. Goketsu quickly jumps after the human monster and catches up to him in midair before swinging both his arms down in a double axe handle and slamming Garo into the ground hard. Hard enough to form a crater. Goketsu then lets himself free fall down on Garo from the sky, landing another devastating hit. Bang watches on from the side. He can't let his pupil get thrashed around like this. He has to do something. Taking as deep a breath as he can without impaling his lungs, the old martial artist dashes at Goketsu, who notices the monster incoming and prepares to fight him. However, one of the giant's legs is suddenly lifted off of the ground by Garo, and he loses his footing. At that moment, Silverfang slams a fist into Goketsu's chin, and then a jab into one of his eyes before the monster is able to regain his footing and attacks Bang with an uppercut. But the old martial artist just redirects the attack back into Goketsu's own face, causing him to hit himself and fall over. Before Bang can take advantage of his opponent's vulnerable state, Garo rockets at him from below. Silver Fang turns to face his disciple and the two of them exchange several hits in midair before Goketsu hops back to his feet and launches a fist at both of them. Thinking fast, with both of his arms preoccupied by Garo, Bang extends one of his legs out and uses it to redirect Goketsu's blow away from himself. He then quickly grabs one of Garo's arms with both of his hands and swings his pupil around before throwing him at Goketsu. Both monsters are surprised, 
but they both quickly recollect themselves and Garo extends one of his legs at Goketsu, aiming to land a devastating kick on him. Meanwhile, the giant shoots a fist out of the young man, hoping to crush his bones once again. The two warriors clash in the air, and after a few intense seconds of struggling, due to Garo not having any ground to stand on and Goketsu having firm footing, the giant is able to swat the hero hunter away. Because of the struggle, Bang is able to land back down on the ground and rush at Goketsu before he even knows it. The old master drives a strong kick into the monster's foot and is able to crack one of the giant's bones. Goketsu grunts in pain, but such meager damage will not hinder him. He shoots a hand out to squash Bang, but the master is quick on his feet and jumps back in time to avoid it. However, what he is not able to avoid is a surprise punch from Garo right into his back. The old martial artist spits up blood as he's sent flying into the ground. Just barely, he's able to tense up his muscles to the point that the impact with the ground does not shake his internals at all. For now, his lungs are safe. But how long Bang will be able to go before he has to take a deeper breath is anyone's guess. Hey, what's all the noise about? A familiar voice comes from behind some trees. Bang, Goketsu and Garo all look over in that direction. For a few moments, nothing happens. But then, Goketsu sees something unexpected. From behind the trees emerges a giant six-eyed hound, with a figure in yellow riding on top of it. A uh, overgrown rover? What are you doing here? Are you talking to the dog? Shouldn't you address the owner instead? Saitama jumps off of the monster hound and lands on the ground with a slight thud. Saitama! What are you doing here? Why does everybody keep asking that? And what is up with people today in general? First Boros comes to the lab without his disguise and tells me to watch over Rover. Seriously, he thinks he's the boss of me or something. Ordering me around like that? Next time I see him, I'll punch him. Anyway, after that I got bored, so I went to walk Rover around my favorite forest and boom! You're all here tearing it up. What's wrong with you people? A apologies We were just tracking the Hero Hunter and then ended up running into some monsters. Would you mind helping us out? If it means you'll stop tearing apart my forest, then sure. Who do I have to beat up? Saitama asks as he does some stretches. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a figure rushes at him with great speed. Saitama! Sonic sprints at his target with bloodshot eyes. I finally found you! I've grown far stronger than I was the last time. Through intense training and monsterization, I've risen above the ceiling of humanity. And now, I'll show you all I've got! Prepare to die by my hand! Sonic is interrupted when Saitama quickly leans back with his arms extended and accidentally smacks Sonic away while performing his stretches. Sorry, what was that? I didn't quite hear you. Screaming in pain, the ninja flies at massively faster than light speeds right at Garo. Before the martial artist has time to react, Sonic crashes into him and both men are sent flying so fast that they disappear into the horizon in under a second. Bang and Goketsu's eyes bulge out of their sockets. G garo Alright, done with the stretches. So, who do I gotta punch, old dude? Flabbergasted, Bang and Goketsu stare at the horizon in shock before turning to Saitama. Who are you? I'm the professional hero, Saitama. And you look like a bad guy. The baldy takes a step toward Goketsu. Shaken by what he just witnessed, the giant takes a step back. At that moment, Saitama hears the sound of a stream behind him and turns around, only to see Rover peeing on a tree. Hey! No peeing in the park! Saitama yells at the dog monster and starts running toward him. Rover, thinking his master's friend wants to play chase, runs off in the opposite direction. Hey! Come back! And just like they appeared, Saitama and Rover vanish back into the forest, leaving Bang and Goketsu confused like never before. Meanwhile, Hellfire and Gale wonder where Sonic ran off to. He said he'd seen something and then just dipped. 
What in the world? Why did he just abandon them? In any case, the two ninjas don't have time to think about that, as Bomb is now going on the offensive. With the battle having turned into a 2v1, it's a lot easier for the martial artist to make progress. Slowly but surely, he is driving Hellfire and Gale into a corner. The two of them realize things aren't going well for them. With their weapons gone, they can only rely on close quarters combat. And with that being Bomb's specialty, that's less than ideal. After a few minutes of intense battle, Hellfire and Gale manage to regroup with one another for a few seconds. Hey, things are looking bad. What do we do? Retreat? Keep fighting. As long as that old man is still standing, he won't let us get away. We need to tire him out and then make a run for it. Easier said than done. Hellfire responds before taking a stance. A few dozen meters in front of them, Bang takes a few deep sighs. If you think it'll be that easy, then I've got some bad news for you. He takes a fighting stance of his own, and the three combatants jump into action. Hellfire and Gale rush at the old martial artist with everything they have, putting their lives on the line. Punches, kicks, claw slashes. Bomb is able to track their movements and fluidly block, parry and counter each one of their attacks without much trouble. But with the two of them going at absolute top speed, the old martial artist is beginning to feel the pressure. Nearby, Nichiren and Haragiri cross blades. Why? Why would you abandon your comrades and your own humanity? Is your lust for power really that great? Because as a human, I wasn't good enough. No matter how much I tried, no matter how many hours I put into honing my mind and body, I could never catch up to you or Kamikaze. I pushed myself to my limit and beyond, day in and day out, but the gap between our natural talents was simply too much to overcome with mere training. All my blood, sweat and tears, all of my years of dedication and suffering, tearing myself apart in brutal training, all of it was for nothing. So I abandoned it all. To hell with your talent. To hell with my useless efforts. By giving up my humanity, as a monster, I was able to reach you. No, I was able to surpass you. Haragiri screams as he blows Nichiren away. The old swordsman crashes into some rubble. Haragiri stands tall before him, with a sword raised, ready to slice his former friend down. Nichiren raises his head to face the monster his friend has become. And yet, you fail to realize what it is that made me and Kamikaze stronger than you in the first place. Huh? <laughs> Explain. Maybe our natural talents had something to do with it. Maybe not. But I know damned well that that wasn't the main reason for our success. I had people around me. Strong, trustworthy people. My master. Two of our friends who you took down today. And many others. I only grew strong because I had them to help me do so. We sparred. We talked. We helped each other up in times of need. A single person can achieve great things. But those things will never measure up to the heights a strong group of people can reach. That's why when Kamikaze came around, I trained him alongside various other masters and students. He had natural talent, of course, but he was also dedicated, strong-willed, and most of all, he had other people to help him rise. The two of us constantly trained together, along with other members of the Council. Meanwhile, you were working in isolation. That's why you were always the weakest among us. We tried to get you to see it, to join us, but you didn't listen. You only have yourself to blame for your weakness. Haragiri's body starts trembling with fury. So you're saying teamwork and friendship and hard work is the key? Is that it? Are you serious? Don't give me that crap. 
He murmurs before swinging his blade at Nitrin's neck with the intent to decapitate him. To his surprise, at the last second, the old man manages to raise his sword and block the incoming attack before quickly jumping away and landing back on his feet. Feel free to disagree. I do not care any longer. You are a monster now. And you must be stopped! Right here! Right now! I shall cut you down with my own blade! Nichiren shouts before lunging at his former friend and slashing at his waist. Haragiri swiftly blocks the attack and answers in kind. The two swordsmen clash with all their might. Surprisingly, they seem to be around even, despite Haragiri's monsterization. Nichiren and Haragiri dash around the battlefield, exchanging hundreds of slashes with each other. Swing, block, parry, swing, thrust, parry, swing. The two of them go through hundreds of different moves and combinations as they try to skewer each other with everything they have. Putting all their immense skill gained through decades of intense training on display. At the same time, Bang and Goketsu resume their battle, and soon, a giant barrage of blows from Goketsu sends huge chunks of rubble flying into the sky once again, forcing the two swordsmen to abandon the ground and continue their battle in the air among the boulders. The same happens with Bomb and the ninja duo, who jump from rock to rock to keep themselves afloat. Due to the unstable battlefield, Bomb is able to separate Gale from Hellfire and kick him away toward the cracked surface of the earth beneath them, leaving him in a one-on-one -on -one against the Flame Ninja. The worst possible scenario for the latter. Hellfire does his best to defend himself, but it's no use. Against Bomb's martial arts, and with one of his arms already injured, Hellfire Flame doesn't stand a chance, and soon he is blown into pieces. At the same time, Nichiren and Haragiri battle in the sky, jumping from rubble to rubble, clashing in midair with their blades, slicing huge chunks of rock just so they can reach their opponent easier. At one point, Haragiri manages to knock Nichiren's sword out of his hand, and goes in for the kill, only for the old master to unexpectedly kick him in the stomach and launch him away before going back to pick up his weapon. Moments later, the rubble crashes down on the ground and the battle resumes among the debris. Both swordsmen yell out as they rush at each other at top speed, with the tips of their blades aimed at each other's hearts. Neither one stops, neither one tries to dodge. This will be the final clash between longtime friends. One last lethal clash. Haragiri and Nichiren both pierce each other's hearts and lean against each other, shoulder to shoulder, coughing up blood. However, even in this predicament, the monster swordsman smirks. <laughs> you fool. An injury like this is fatal to you, but to me, it is merely a flesh wound. I am a monster, remember? I'll heal quickly. Which is why I'm not done yet! Nichiren declares before suddenly gripping his sword tightly with both arms and driving upward. Haragiri screams out in pain as he's sliced in half from the heart up. His head is split into two, and his body drops limply to the ground. Nichiren takes a few deep breaths before collapsing next to his former friend. He grips his heart as he feels the warm embrace of death drawing ever closer. However, the swordsman refuses to die. Not yet. There is still something he must do. He tries to stand up, but the pain in his chest is too great, and he falls back down, coughing up more blood. But, as luck would have it, fate seems to smile upon the dying old man, as Bomb soon comes rushing to his side. He crouches down next to the swordsman. Nichiren, what happened? How hurt are you? I'm fine, but I don't have long to live. What happened to your opponents? One ran off in the middle of the battle. I killed the second one, but the third used the time I spent on killing his comrade to run away. We should be safe for now, though. I see. Then please... Get me to Atomic Samurai. 
I have something to give him before I go. It's important. Very well. Bomb sighs before scooping the old man up in his arms and heading off to search for Atomic. While they search, Atomic Samurai is fighting for his life against the unorthodox fighting style of his opponent. Phoenix Man continues using his flight advantage to attack the swordsman in all sorts of ways never before encountered by him. Attacks not just from four sides, but from above too. And the bird monster can move freely through the air however he wants, whenever he wants, wherever he wants. He doesn't need to touch down on the ground at all. This makes him hard to predict. Phoenix Man is undeniably dictating the flow of the battle. And all Atomic can do is keep defending. He does try attacking on occasion, but that usually ends up with him getting slashed. By now, there are nearly 20 different cuts all over his body. Arms, legs, sides, back, even a couple on his head. Still, the battle has been going on for quite some time and Phoenix Man has performed nearly 200 charges at this point. The fact that only a tenth of them slip through shows how incredible Atomic Samurai's skill really is. He's up against an entirely new fighting style he's never encountered before, and yet he's still able to combat it, albeit barely. By now, the swordsman is starting to reach his limit. With all those cuts, including the one deep one in the side, he's losing too much blood. It is only a matter of time until he cannot go on any longer. And Phoenix Man knows this. You know, it's been fun. I enjoyed our little scuffle. But you must face it. You're simply wasting time. There's no way for you to beat me. You'll collapse at any moment now. Please, just die already so I can go help out my companion. You mean the Hero Hunter? How'd you become pals in the first place? Atomic Samurai grunts. <laughs> oh no, no, no. I'm not falling for that one. You will not get me to waste time by monologuing. Well, it was worth a try at least. Kamikaze chuckles to himself. However, despite this facade, the swordsman can feel that what the monster said before is true. He is going to die if things go on like this. And the worst thing is, there is really nothing he can do about it. Still, the swordsmaster will not give up. He'll keep fighting to the bitter end and buy his comrades as much time as possible. On that note, Phoenix Man lunges at him once again. Thanks for the fun, but I'm done with you. The bird monster shouts and prepares to skewer his enemy. Right as he's about to reach Atomic, a figure sprints out of the woods. Before Phoenix Man can change his trajectory, the figure reaches him and kicks him away. Atomic Samurai sighs in relief as he sees Bomb land next to him. That relief is soon replaced by confusion, and then concern as he sees Nichiren in Bomb's arms. Before he can ask what happened, the old martial artist lays the swordsman down on the ground next to Atomic and turns to face Phoenix Man. I'll buy you some time. Bomb states before lunging at the creature. Kamikaze nods before turning to his master. Master, I killed Haragiri, but at the cost of my own life. You are the last of the Council of Swordsmasters, Kamikaze. Here. Take this, before it's too late. Nichiren takes out his necklace, crosses his fingers, and a portal opens up inside the necklace. From it, the old swordsman pulls out a blade. Kamikaze takes it with both hands and looks at the sword in awe. So this is it, the legendary Sunblade. A secret sword forged on a long lost continent passed down from generation to generation within the Council of Swordsmen. Nichiren, knowing he doesn't have much time left, speaks. As your master, I have watched you grow into a fine swordsman. Please, take care of the Council. 
and find the Moonblade, wherever it sleeps. I swear I will. Good. Give my regards to Spring Mustachio too, will you? Of course. Nichiren grips Kamikaze's hand one final time, before closing his eyes. His life fades away peacefully. Kamikaze sighs before letting go of his master and gripping the Sunblade tightly. He realizes that if he wants to win against Phoenix Man, this sword is his best option. He tries to draw the blade, but it doesn't budge. That's when Atomic remembers that the sword itself is alive, and can only be drawn by those who he deems worthy. He starts asking what kind of spirit and character the sword requires to be drawn, and comes to the conclusion that he needs intense concentration. He blocks out all of his senses, imagining a still water mirror beneath his feet. The sounds of the battle between Bomb and Phoenix Man, the loud crashes coming from afar where Goketsu and Bang are fighting. All of it vanishes, and all that remains is the sword. In the face of such intense concentration, the Sunblade responds. In an instant, the atmosphere around the entire battlefield changes. The air becomes hot and dry, as if all humidity has vanished from the surrounding area. Everyone stops their battles. Bomb turns to look at Atomic Samurai, and what he sees makes his eyes widen. Standing in the middle of the battlefield, surrounded by flames, Kamikaze stands tall with a burning blade fused into his hand. Something about him has changed. Bomb can see no pupils in his eyes, only a bright, flaming light. The swordsman winds up his hand, and for some reason, Bomb's instincts start screaming for him to get away, and he doesn't object to them. The old martial artist jumps to the side, away from Phoenix Man, and as soon as he does, Atomic Samurai bursts forth at a ridiculous speed. Phoenix Man's eyes go wide as he just barely manages to dodge the swordsman's swing. The tip of the samurai's blade touches the ground, and in that instance, a huge chunk of earth is instantly evaporated behind Phoenix Man. The monster spreads his wings and flies into the sky, horrified. If that blade so much as touches him, it might actually end his life. Quickly, Atomic jumps after his prey, and Phoenix Man once again just barely manages to avoid a lethal blow, but the Sunblade briefly makes contact with one of his arms. Instantly, the hand bursts into flames that burn as hot as the sun itself. Phoenix Man acts quickly, and rips his own burning arm off so the fire won't spread. He watches as his appendage disappears into flames as soon as he severs it from his body. The bird monster swings his wings and flies away from the burning swordsman, but to his shock, Atomic Samurai suddenly kicks off of the air itself and lunges at him with incredible swiftness and speed. How? How is that possible? Phoenix Man screams in horror as the swordsman appears right in front of him and raises his arms. Hold on! Please! We can talk this through! The monster pleads, but he can see no mercy in Kamikaze's burning eyes. Vanish, Vanish into, into nothingness, nothingness monster. monster. Atomic says before his blade bursts into flames so intense that the surrounding trees catch on fire. Inferno Slash! Kamikaze brings the sun blade down on Phoenix Man, slicing him clean in half and making his body burst into flames. Unable to say another word, the two halves of the monster fall to the ground and burn into ashes within seconds. Atomic Samurai lands on his feet and sheathes his sword. As soon as he does, the man collapses from fatigue. He coughs up a bit of blood, but thankfully, Bomb rushes to his side and holds him up. He quickly pulls out some bandages from his back pocket and starts patching the hero up. Where did you get those? In battle, you never know when you'll need to help out a friend. More importantly, if we act quickly, you will live. Forget about me. 
I can wrap those bandages myself. Based on the noise, Silverfang is still fighting. Go help him finish his battle. All right, thank you. Bomb stands up. He looks over at where Phoenix Man fell one last time. There, he sees nothing but a pile of ashes, burning ever so slightly. If the monster is able to come back from this, then there is truly no force in the world that can put him down. Though there don't seem to be any signs of resurrection going on. Maybe the old master is just being paranoid. Or maybe... For the briefest of moments, the flame becomes brighter and more intense before dying back down. For that brief moment, Bomb's heart nearly jumped out of his chest. He's still worried about a possible resurrection. Hey, maybe you should come along, just in case. Bomb says while staring at the ashes. Atomic Samurai follows the direction of his gaze and realizes what the old martial artist is worried about. Fine. I don't want to be near that pile of ash anyway. Stinks like burnt chicken. Kamikaze stands up, and with help from Bomb, the two of them quickly wrap some bandages around his most dangerous wounds and rush to Bang's side, who is currently engaged in a fierce battle against Goketsu. Silver Fang realizes that the sounds of battle around them have stopped, which means the other fights are over. He prays that it's his teammates that ended up victorious. If that is the case, and if they're in good enough shape to fight, they should be here any minute. If he can hold out just a bit more without having to utilize the awakening breath, then all will be well. But if not, the old master's thought process is interrupted when Goketsu nearly lands a kick on his body. What's the matter? Are you running out of gas, old man? Goketsu taunts. But in reality, he has also noticed the absence of other sounds of battle. Which means his teammates either won and are coming to help him, won and are too exhausted to help him, or they could have been defeated. If they were in good enough shape to help him, they would have likely already arrived. A couple minutes have already passed since all the noises stopped. They should be here by now if they were in fighting shape. Which means they likely won't be coming at all. But the same applies to the opposing side. They should be here by now too, but they're not. Maybe they're patching up wounds or something. In any case, Goketsu knows his team was outnumbered from the start. Who knows what actually happened. The monster begins thinking of ways to get out of here unscathed. With the condition Silverfang is in, it's likely that if Goketsu simply started running, he could get away. But then again, Bang is injured. This is his best chance to kill the old man. However, somehow, that doesn't sit right with the monster martial artist. The injury Bang sustained was inflicted by a surprise attack from Garo, not himself. As a martial artist, Goketsu still retains some honor and a sense of pride. Pride which would not be satisfied if he won now. And so, the monster makes his choice. He suddenly stops fighting and puts some distance between Bang and himself. I have to admit, this was a fun battle, Silverfang. But to beat you in your current condition would not be satisfactory for me. Not like this. Heal your wounds and train some more. We will meet again someday to finish our fight. The monster turns around. His words confuse Bang greatly. Are you serious? After all that? I am. The monster says, but before he can jump away, two figures emerge from the forest. Bomb and a rather beat up atomic samurai. Bang lets out a sigh of relief. His friends made it. Goketsu on the other hand simply grunts. That was a very touching speech and all, but we can't really let you get away, creature. Atomic Samurai raises his regular sword, with the sunblade sheathed on his hip. 
he tries to look more lively and confident than he really is. In truth, he will not be of much use in this fight. Not in the shape he's in. Bang is tired out as well. The only real heavy hitter left is Bomb, and he's also quite exhausted. On second thought, maybe it would have been best to let the monster go for now and regroup. The hero's fatigue does not go unnoticed by Goketsu either. You seem to be rather tired to be spouting such words. He takes a fighting stance, and Bomb does the same. Are you good to fight, little brother? Barely, but I can lend some backup. Very well. Further away, where Phoenix Man fell, the tiny flame burning on his ashes suddenly expands. Within the span of a single second, a huge fire erupts from the tiny flame and engulfs a huge part of the forest. Over where Bang and Goketsu are, everyone feels a wave of heat echo throughout the battlefield, and all their skins suddenly receive light first degree burns. Everyone grunts in pain. Out of the ashes where Phoenix Man once burned, an enormous tornado of scorching hot flames erupts into the air. The cloudless sky is suddenly covered by dark clouds, which block out the sun, leaving the gigantic tornado as the only light source for miles upon miles. In the epicenter of the blazing hurricane, a figure rises from the ashes and ascends into the sky. Everyone covers their eyes to avoid being blinded by the immense light given off by the phenomenon. From within the tornado of flames, the figure rises above the clouds and the tornado explodes into a huge inferno, instantly disintegrating the entire forest. All the corpses on the battlefield are incinerated. Bang, Bomb, Atomic, and Goketsu are just barely able to avoid catching on fire by lifting chunks of earth before themselves to block the wave of flame and heat. The huge fire continues for a few more moments before quickly dying down. From above the clouds, a burning silhouette descends to the land like a god from the heavens, surrounded by trails of fire. Everyone watches on in shock and horror as the figure lands on the ground and the earth beneath it starts to melt. Suddenly, the flame covering the creature's body dies down, revealing the body underneath. Gone is the golden skin of Brilliant Eagle, replaced by scorching hot, crimson red feathers that span the monster's entire body. His wings are now accented by fire coming off of the tips of their feathers. The bird monster's arms are now more muscular and covered in feathers like the rest of its new body. Phoenix Man's beak has been fused into his lower jaw and the monster's humanoid face has been replaced by a black void with piercing, burning eyes at the front. Brilliant Eagle Phoenix Man is no more. Now, there is only 